What's going on everyone? So I've made a couple of videos in the past where I've mentioned my habit of buying and selling things online, basically flipping items for profit as a form of a side hustle. Actually, the very first video that I ever uploaded on this channel was all about that. It was all about my experiences. Um, and it was about how I basically took $20 and over a couple years turned it into over $50,000. If you haven't seen that video yet, you can pause this one and go watch that one. I'll put the link up here. Um, but in the numerous videos where I've made brief mention of liking to buy and sell things online or even just selling my old possessions I have lying around at home and collecting up some extra money, a few of you have left comments indicating that you find this to be a really difficult process, that you find it hard to sell things, that things never sell or they sell for very little money or they take a really long time. And you've mentioned that you'd like some tips on how to make this process a whole lot more smooth. So today I'm actually gonna be doing a flip and I figured I would take you guys along for the ride. I've also been meaning to try my hand at vlogging. This is something that I've never really done before, but I've always wanted to try and so I thought today would be a great opportunity to kind of tackle both of those things at once to try vlogging the entire experience of me going and buying something bringing it home photographing it posting it online selling it making the profit and so that's exactly what's happened today I logged on to my buy and sell apps this morning and I found somebody in the city who I think is moving and selling off a bunch of musical gear and I've managed to negotiate what I think is a really really solid deal I'm going to pick up a guitar it's gonna be an acoustic guitar as well as an electric drum set and for both items together I'm gonna to be paying $350 and I think think that there's about seven to 750s worth of value. So I have a potential to make like a $400 profit or more. And for that, it's definitely worth, you know, two hours of my time and a little bit of gas money. And so that is the adventure today. And I'm going to take you guys along for the ride. But first I need to get some food. I haven't eaten. I haven't had a drink. It's like 1245 and I'm dying of thirst. So let's go do that first. I am just gonna have a quick lunch and I will not make you guys watch me too because I eat like a friggin giraffe or something. I don't know, rhinoceros, just, just slamming, slamming my face into the food. I won't make you guys sit through that. So I'm just gonna have my sandwich, I'm gonna have my tea uh, and then we're gonna hit the road. So I'll see you guys in a few. All right, so I'm all done my sandwich. I'm all done my tea. I'm feeling way better. I'm ready to go. See you later, little buddy. I love you. See you in a bit. Close the garage, and away we go. I don't know about you guys, but I am absolutely one of those people who is 100% entirely useless without my GPS. Here we go. What a jam. Shout out to MXPX. Give me friends for I am late again. Jesus fucking Christ, look at this. There's two big ass trucks in front of me going 30. The street is 60, I believe, 60 kilometers an hour. They're doing 30. I understand that trucks have to like, you know, allow more time to speed up and allow more time to slow down, to be safe, and they have to turn slower. I get all that. But why do they have to just drive at half the speed limit? Oh, oh he's turning. Well, now I feel like an asshole because now this guy's speeding up. Oops, story of my life, being an asshole with a big mouth. I know that a lot of you guys watching are not so interested in flipping, more so just looking to free up some space in your house and sell off some of your old shit for some extra money, and that's totally cool. However, if you are interested in flipping, if you're interested in buying and selling things for profit, I thought I would just give you guys a couple quick pointers on how to find good deals, because that's obviously step number one and probably the most important part. If you don't have anything to sell, then you're not gonna make any money. Um, so the first thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is whatever classifies you're using, first of all, check them all and check them off. And like, there's probably, I know like in Canada here we have Kijiji, there's Craigslist, there's Facebook Marketplace, there's an app called Virage Sale. But basically, check as many of those apps and as many of those websites as possible and check them off. And because the truth is that if a really good deal does come up, if it's just purely like somebody pricing something to sell it quickly or they've undervalued it or whatever, it's going to go really, really quick especially if you live near a major city. The key to you being able to score them is gonna be the you being the first person to find them and you being the first person to drop everything and run and show up with cash in hand because there are a million people doing what 
I do and there are a million people even just shopping for themselves looking for a bargain and if you're not the first one to get there with the money you're not going to get it you're going to miss out but sometimes you log on and you don't see anything that is a good deal you don't see anything that's impressive and so how do you find things then well there's a couple ways you can go about it and you have to negotiate right that's that's the key here but even negotiation there's a couple ways to go about it number one is if you find something that's priced at fair market value you can make a lower offer if something is worth a hundred dollars and somebody's asking a hundred dollars but you can negotiate them down to 75 well now you've just made potential 25 dollar profit if you can negotiate them down to 50 well now you've just made a 50 dollar profit so asking prices are not the be all end all and a lot of the times you'd be surprised how much you can actually negotiate somebody down on something i think people see something listed for a hundred dollars and they're like too nervous to offer 50 that seems like a low ball and i guess it is but you'd be surprised i would say like at least 50 percent of the time people will either just take the offer or they'll come back and counter you at something somewhere in between you can also use if you have the ability to you know drop everything and run right now to go get it you can use a quick pickup as a negotiation tactic as well a lot of times when people are selling things online they kind of just want them gone and out of the house as i'm sure all of us can relate to and so if you're able to say like hey i can come by right now or hey i can come by this afternoon people are going to be a lot more likely to be flexible with their pricing because you're kind of doing them a favor in a sense. And most importantly is to buy and sell within a niche that you're comfortable in, that you're familiar with, and that you're knowledgeable about. I personally do a lot of musical instruments. I do a lot of like guitars and drums just because I know at least a little bit about them. I know what they're worth and I know how to fix them. If you find that that is still a hard thing to come up with, if you have no personality and no hobbies and you don't know anything about anything, then look around your house, find an item, any sort of item that you know that if you were to sell it right now, today, you could get $100 for it at minimum, maybe more, right? Find an item that's worth $100. Now go online and find somebody who's willing to sell it to you for 50. That's it. That's how simple it is. So I'm currently on the highway. I'm quite a while away from this person's house, so I will check in with you as we get closer. See you soon. Gotta love Toronto traffic. You know what? Like, sometimes I feel like, man, you know what? I really wish I could live in the city. And then I drive down here, like, once, and I'm like, nope. So glad I don't live here. One hour later. Yeah, no problem. Good luck Throw with your move. Ah, got it. Everything's in nice shape. Works well. Sanitize the paws here. And we are out of here. All right, so I just got home. Um, and as you may be able to hear, it is raining like a motherfucker. So for now, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna hang out with Levi for a bit, figure out what I'm gonna do for dinner, and if the rain dies down, I will come back out later and unload the car and bring everything in, and if not, then I'll do it in the morning. So uh, let's go inside and see the boy. Levi, my boy, how are you? Get in, bud. Oh, how you doing? How's it going? I missed you. Oh my goodness, my beautiful son. How are you, bud? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Hi, buddy. <laughs> oh my goodness. I miss you. Oh, I love you. Thanks. Oh, thank you, big Sam. All right, so like half an hour's passed and it seems like the rain has stopped, at least for now. So I'm gonna take advantage of this little burst of sunshine. I'm gonna get everything into the house, out of my car. And I'll show you what the next step is so we can start to sell some of these things. So let's go get that stuff. All right, 
So there's everything behind me. When I sell things, I actually tend to not let people into my house. I typically set the stuff up in the garage and then just have them come out there and get it. And so common sense would say it's way easier to put it from the car to the garage and just leave it there. However, one of the most important things that I have found when you're selling something, A, if you wanna sell it quick, and B, if you wanna get top dollar for it, is you have to make it look like it's in a clean environment where it's been appreciated and loved and taken care of. So if I put this drum set in the garage and I took a picture of it with the kind of dusty garage in the background, eventually it will sell for sure, but I'll probably get 50 to $100 less for it, and it'll probably take two to three times as long as if I bring it inside, set it up on a nice neutral colored wall, which I'm gonna do over there in a moment, um, and make it look like it's in like a clean, well taken care of environment. And it's kind of dumb because the only difference is the placement of the item. It's exactly the same thing in exactly the same condition. However, uh, nobody wants to buy something from your dingy gross basement or your dingy gross garage or it looks like it's covered in spider webs or who the hell knows what. And so you have to give the illusion that it is in pristine condition and that your home is clean and well taken care of. And then I'm gonna have to haul this thing back outside back to the garage and then when the person comes to buy it, it will be set up in the garage for them. And I always say, oh yeah, I just brought it out while you're on your way over here. So it doesn't seem like it's been living in the garage for a long time. So let me show you what I got and let's get it all set up. So here it is, it's in really good condition. It's nice and clean. That's one of the benefits of buying from like a rich area in town is generally the things are in much better condition and much better taken care of. And so I paid $350 for this as well as a guitar that's over on the side. I'll show you in a second. So basically 200 for this and 150 for the guitar is how I'm breaking it down. This drum kit, it's a discontinued model, but when it was available, it sold for $5.99, so $600. I paid two. I think I can easily get like $450 for it in this condition, so that's gonna be the price that I'm looking to get. Worst case scenario, 400 bucks. All right, so I'm just gonna post this stuff online now. I'm gonna tweak the photos a little bit, fix the exposure, fix the contrast, just make sure they're looking perfect, perfect. Today's date is Friday, August 13th. So I'm gonna document this whole series basically from the time that I bought this stuff today until I get it sold and I have cash in hand. And I will kind of show you guys the entire process and how long it takes. Sometimes I get really lucky and sometimes I have stuff sell like the same day. Like I've had opportunities like this where something like this has sold within an hour of me posting it. Sometimes it takes a couple weeks. And depending on how long this whole thing takes will depend on when this video goes live and you'll get to see whether it's taken me a couple days or a couple weeks or however long. So let's check out that guitar. This is a Little Martin electric acoustic guitar. Actually exactly the same one that I have over in the corner over there. I have one of these myself and I absolutely love it. So this is it. Um, again, I think this retails for about $600 brand new. However, it does have a bit of a damage. It has like a hairline crack. I don't know if you can see let me pump up the ISO here for a second. So there you can kind of see it has a little bit of a hairline crack. This is actually a very common damage in this style of guitar. Um, I've seen a lot of them that have that. Not a huge deal. Uh, I'm hoping I can still get about $300 or so for it. So again, 150 to 300, so $150 profit would be great. Comes with the case and uh, it still plays very, very well. So happy Sunday guys, today is Sunday, August 15th, I believe. Yeah, it's the 15th. So it's been two days since I originally bought that guitar and that electric drum set and brought it in and photographed it and posted it online. And today while I was eating lunch just a short while ago around noon, I got a message on Kijiji that I have somebody who's interested in the guitar. So uh, with the internet, as I'm sure you know, people can be flaky. I'm not gonna take this as a sure shot just yet. However, I do have tentative plans to meet with him this evening. I'm gonna be driving down to my mom's house later this afternoon to have dinner with her this evening, and this person said that he will meet me in her neighborhood, so fingers crossed that that's actually gonna pan out. Um, I'm gonna bring it with me. Worst case scenario is I bring it back home with me. Not a huge deal, done it many, many times, unfortunately, but uh, it's been two days, and I'm pretty sure I have a solid bite on that guitar. This weekend was a bit of a crapshoot because it is mid-August, a lot of people are away on vacation, and I knew that you know, in any other given weekend, I would be pretty certain I was gonna get a lot of action on those two items. This weekend, I was not so sure but here we are, it's Sunday, and I got a bite on the guitar, which, fun fact, I actually just posted this morning. I posted the drum set up on Friday, but I actually just posted the guitar this morning, last night, 
this morning. I'm very confused. I posted it this morning and uh, I already got a bite on it. So realistically speaking, it took a couple hours from the time that I posted it to the time that I got a potential buyer. Welcome back. So it's Sunday night. It's now like just after 9.30. I just got back from having dinner with my mom. I was hoping to have met up with that person, but surprise, surprise, he bailed. So, I mean, that's kind of how it goes. Not a huge shock, honestly. When you're selling things online, it's definitely a bit frustrating, but I would say it's about a 50-50 chance as to whether or not the person who makes the arrangements with you is actually gonna come through. So obviously those things aren't gonna sell this weekend. I still have the guitar, I still have the drums. Not a huge deal, it's only been two days. Um, but I will keep you guys in the loop throughout the week. Next time I get a bite on it, next time I get somebody who I think is hopefully a legit buyer, I will be back and we'll, we'll reconnect at that point. See you in a bit. Oh my god, look at my hair. I'm on my way home from work right now. Um, I'm all windblown and the weather's been a disaster today, so that's what we're dealing with. But uh, I just got someone message me and tell me that they are interested in coming to pick up that little Martin guitar. Supposedly they're on their way now, so I'm going to meet them at my place in about 45 minutes. And hopefully they come through. I think you will. Catch you guys there. totally do it. You just have to be patient. Sometimes you're going to deal with fire kickers, but easiest $200 that I've made in a while. So I will check back in with you guys when I get a hit on the drum. So far, no real action, but we'll see how it goes. Welcome back. Hey, how you doing? It's been a while. Today is Saturday, August 28th. So it's been about a week and a half or almost two weeks since the last update. Uh, and the reason for that is that that's kind of how flipping goes sometimes. The last time I saw you guys, I had a successful sale of that little guitar. The drums have been sitting in my garage ever since then. And today that may change. Over the last week or two, I've had a good couple offers. I've had someone offer 375. I had someone even offer 400, which honestly I could have taken, but I'm being a little greedy. I'm being a little picky. I think 450 is a fair asking price. And so I've been staying firm on my price. Um, but in just a short while, I have somebody coming over to take a look at them. I hate that phrase. It's very non-committal. It drives me nuts. I don't know if she's actually going to go ahead and buy them. I don't know if she's going to try and, and hassle me or, or hustle with me or negotiate with me when she gets here. Um, but I will check in with you guys in a few. I'm just going to have a quick lunch and then hopefully this person will be here. I'm going to set them up on my porch because I have a whole bunch of other gear in my garage right now that I don't really like to advertise to the general public. Um, and I will uh, let you guys know what happens. Fingers crossed, we're about to have a sale and that'll be the end of it. Guess what? Sold. 450 firm, no negotiations, no problems. And uh, I guess that's a wrap. The guitar's sold, the drums are sold. It took me like two weeks from the time that I picked them both up to get them both sold. So let's head over to the computer and I'll do some quick tallying and see where my profits are at. All right, let's get into it. So I keep an Excel spreadsheet on my computer because I do quite a bit of buying and selling. It helps me to keep track of what I've purchased, where I got it, when I got it, how much I paid for it. So it was Friday, August 13th when I bought those two things. Today's date is Saturday, August 28th, so it's been like exactly two weeks. I paid $350 for the two items together, and so mentally I compartmentalized it as $150 for the guitar and $200 for the drums. Um, so for the little guitar, $150 I paid for it. I sold it for $350, so it's a nice, easy $200 profit. And now for these drums, which like I said, I paid $200 for, I just sold for $450, so that's a $250 profit for a grand total of $450 profit in my pocket. The only work I really had to do was to drive down into the city and pick them up, which took, you know, a couple hours out of my afternoon. So all in all, including the time spent driving to pick these things up, driving back home with them, bringing them inside, photographing them, posting them online, and then communicating back and forth with a few people to get them sold, I would say I probably spent a total of about three hours. And bear in mind, that's a lot longer than I typically would spend because I drove a lot further to get these things than I typically would, but I knew it was gonna be a nice, chunky little profit, so it was worth it to me. But let's say I spend about three hours for $450 profit, that's $150 an hour. Where else are you gonna make that kind of money? Even factoring in maybe 10 to $20 worth of gas for the trip there and back, that's still well over $400 of profit for virtually no work. And I mean, I consider this fun. I enjoy doing this. I wish that I had the opportunity to do more of this. I wish I had more time to dedicate to it. But it just goes to show you that selling things online is not difficult. It can be time consuming and dealing with people can certainly be frustrating. But generally speaking, I have found that if your item is in good condition and your pictures are good and your ad is descriptive, 
And if you can be patient, you will generally get the price that you want for it. If you're asking a reasonable price, you can definitely negotiate if you want to get it sold sooner, that's your choice. But if you know your asking price is fair and you just hold out and you just be a little bit patient, generally somebody will come through and pay you what you're asking. On some of my videos in the past, you guys have commented and said things like that you find it really hard to sell things online, you find it frustrating and time consuming, or your things just don't sell. And so I hope you found this video a little bit informative as I kind of walk you through my process. I'm not saying it's the only way to do it, but it's definitely my way to do it. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it at all informative or helpful, please go ahead and hit the like button. I really appreciate every like that my video gets. It helps me out tremendously, helps the algorithm to push this video onto more people. I know this video is quite different than the videos I typically make. It was a lot more casual, almost more like a vlog, and I'm not sure how you guys feel about this format but if you enjoyed it leave me a comment down below and let me know if you'd like me to make more content about flipping or even just about tips for selling things online again leave me a comment in the comment section down below let me know and I will be happy to do that for you if you'd like this kind of content if you want to see more of it if you haven't subscribed yet please consider going ahead and hitting the subscribe button I really appreciate it other than that I will see you guys in the next video take care